here are some ideas about uh, big data, uh, which is a, uh, a hot topic now. Clearly, there's been an enormous increase in the number of bits that we've collected. In a sense, we've gone from, a say, a video camera that has one camera that's looking at uh, an area that has 16-bit resolution at one frame per second. Now we have 10 cameras on the same area with 32-bit resolution and 30 frames per second, and we have 600 times more bits as a result. I claim on average that's an increase in 2% more information. <laughs> And that's because of the enormous redundancies in what is captured in most scenes. Uh, another way to put it is that no one can watch the security video live for more than about 15 minutes without going crazy. It's just insane. Enormous number of bits. But you need to go from bits to data information, to ideas, to interventions, to consequences. And nothing in that link, those set of seven links, has changed uh, except the thing at the end. There was making inferences about human behavior, especially from after the fact data, which this is, tends to be, hasn't gotten any easier. The, all the difficulties of, of of cherry picking and biases, and we often in studying human behavior cannot even learn what's causing what, even on very important problems. For example, the relationship between health and exercise. No one really knows the direction of the causal arrow. Does exercise cause good health, or does good health permit people to exercise? Also in human behavior, there's a great deal of arrow that heads on both sides, pointing simultaneously, it's called simultaneity, that both ways there are feedbacks that go back and forth. And resolving those without doing experiments is virtually impossible. And so anytime you draw an arrow, and you put an arrow tip, and you say it goes this way, why don't you have one pointing the other way and say it's an empirical question exactly which way they're going. And that's enormously difficult to figure out and after that data. There's also the problem of that the results of a study are largely determined by the quality of the research design. In the chapter on evidence corruption, and I, I urge all of you who do big data, it's in the Green Book, read that chapter. There is a, a, a famous uh, study where they began looking at the medical literature of treatment in field after field. For example, there were something like 50 studies published of the use of, of steroids to treat liver cancer. And all but two of them were after the fact, retrospective <coughs> studies, and there were two randomized experiments where they randomly assigned steroids or not to liver cancer and they see and there were studies that meet the gold standard. The two studies that were met the gold standard and were real experiments revealed that steroids were in fact harmful. That leaves the, the 48 other retrospective studies. 38 of those studies, which were published in medical journals and peer reviewed, said that steroids assisted people with help uh, defeat liver cancer. They all got it dead wrong. These are scientific studies peer-reviewed on a simple causal question. Does this drug help liver cancer? That is due in part to the difficulty of, uh, see they couldn't even get the sign right. Well, they said it helped. In fact, when the studies were done prospectively, that is with randomized controls, and it was harmful. And you can see the stack of reprints you know, of articles, 38, dead wrong. Two articles where the research design was right that right. So one thing that a lot of people, in, in, especially in, in 
okay, well, in many industries, is they have become amateur social scientists and trying to answer uh, problems that people have seriously studied for a long time and really can't answer very well or come back and say they're feedback relationships. So almost all marketing studies are slipshod, third-rate, you know, amateur social science. And they aren't even peer-reviewed. And they're rarely randomized. So we've got to, to so all the problems about gaining knowledge about human beings have not changed just because we have more bits. <coughs> the same problems inference and that holds. And now we've got to get up to actions and interventions. So there were endless studies about various vitamins, and they found out that uh, uh, healthy people took a lot of vitamins, essentially, and that they see a relationship. And then when they intervened, the vitamin, some of them, vitamin E, proved to be harmful. The others, you know, there's, there's always this thing. Remember A, C, and E? That was really big about 10 years ago. That's all died. D is, is kind of up there now. It'll soon collapse. E was way up, and then it's actually negative. And all these came from the, 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 the retrospective data where the healthy people take vitamins. Hey, that's because they're healthy people. They can afford to. They do this <coughs> and so on. So you don't know the causal direction. Vitamins cause health or health causes vitamins. The only way to ever find out is to do an experiment. And, and you know, with sugar pills and randomization, that's the only way to find out. So there's an enormous step of mining at, after the old data that's been generated often through another process, and getting interventions that actually will work in the real world. And these are simple questions in a sense, you know, does a particular vitamin affect health? And it was got the wrong answers for a long time. And, and this was, you know, kind of serious research, but with some biases, you know, it's financed by the vitamin industry or financed by big pharma. So, None of the problems of learning about, uh, about human beings uh, uh, have, have gone away. Real science, since Galileo's telescope, has been big data right from the start. In other words, Galileo's telescope was an enormous increase in the presently available data at 1610. So that's fair to call that big data. And Science, and this has been true, so the Sloan Star Survey, you, you want big data, look at DNA. You know, all of na nature is great big data, and measurements on it are enormous amounts of data. All of the photographs of NASA, all the measurements that NASA's made on the Earth are probably up to, to zeta bytes by now. But real science is different because everything that they see is a product of the universal laws of nature which are causal and, and, uh, and always work and don't care what human beings think of them. They're utterly different from what we think of. You can't pitch nature. You can pitch social science a lot. There's bias. And there's that gold standard. And it reduces cheating and bias because it'll be discovered because of the forever quality of the, of the laws of nature. So real scientists approach big data. Uh, they have an idea why you should measure something and look at it. And they go into this immense database called nature, and they go through the course out of measurements based on a theory. That's the way to make inferences, that you have a theory, an idea, a sense of what's relevant. You go in, and, and it's independent from the data, you go in and investigate the, the data then, to test ideas. And so you have the strength of the theory combined with the strength of the empirical evidence. And the only other pillar you need to learn the truth is to reject competing explanations of your results. That's the third pillar of an explanation. If you generate the idea solely from data, you've lost the theory side. And so what people do, they look in the data and say, well, I have this theory. And I test, I looked in the data and I found out to be true. See, there's a circularity within the data. You don't have that independent support that they have in real science. Um, so what are we to do with all these bits? Uh, the main thing that people do these days is they brag about them. I'm sure you've met some guy at the party who talks about his big swinging terabytes. 
How do you handle this situation? You only need to know two words. You can uh, you can uh, take out uh, take out your phone and say and you can say uh, uh, this is the, uh, uh, the the petabyte version of the iPhone. That will probably knock his socks off. He'll probably just keel over. If he persists and he knows what he knows about uh, petabytes, and you drop your, you go thermonuclear, and you tell him about the zeta bytes. Okay? Uh, only nature right now has, has uh, zeta bytes. Uh, the second thing, which is the big uh, activity, uh, is that you can consult about. Uh, there's all this big data, and so we uh, we have to bring people in to explain it to us, and they will of course uh, produce results of it mainly from amateur social science. Uh, they can't come back to you and say, there's nothing here in all these terab terabytes. They'll, come, they'll, they'll produce a, a findings. Uh, you can monetize them. This is usually the second last act of a company that's desperate. <laughs> you know, the hedge fund people have taken over and they're looking at the assets and they say, they see this immense amount of data, the immense amount of IT costs, and they say, oh, maybe we can somehow sell this asset off. It must be worth you know, billions. The last step is the company that becomes patent trolls. So we have Yahoo, we have Brown, we have Kodak. That's the final. They stop doing what they do and try to, that's it, that's it. They, try to make, they try to monetize the data. Another thing, the popular thing to do is to data mine. And there's, a, there's something there. You know, you, one way you learn about the world is by observing it. And this is maybe a way of observing it. Except much of this data is transactions data that was collected for some other purpose. It's not, you know, it's it's not on it's not the way a scientist goes in, you know, and targeted targeted collections of data. It's resulted for some <coughs> other reason. And so frequently data mining is um, is when you have too much data and too few ideas hope to maybe generate something. And there's a little bit of truth to that. But it's also very dangerous, as we'll see shortly. 